Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to discuss how a scheduler works in a Spring Boot batch application. So in early, earlier video tutorial, we have seen how we can read uh, data from the database and after reading from the database, how we can write same data into the CSV file in a Spring Boot batch application. So same application uh, uh, I have copied and pasted in the same workspace and I have given the different name like a Spring Boot Batch Scheduler Project and uh, I have added uh, one more file that is called My Scheduler and here I am trying to show how basically a scheduler uh, works with a Spring Batch application. So let me explain you all projects over here. So this is my basically uh, a Spring Boot uh, uh, Bootstrap class. Uh, that's that's what this class is annotated as at the at rate Spring Boot application. So this is the starting point of our application. If you look into the here, I have this is the uh, heart of basically this file is the heart of our Spring uh, Boot batch application. So here you can see this uh, class is annotated at rate configuration. That means we have configured a lot of bins right we have defined a lot of methods and annotated as at rate bin right uh, so basically we are just creating some bin and registering into uh, just we are registering in uh, application context so these things already we have discussed in our previous video tutorial i'm assuming you have watched my previous video tutorial as well so here uh, we have basically enable batch processing by annotating this class as at rate enable batch processing we have auto auto wired we are auto wiring which is basically job builder factory step builder factory and data source now here i have created a reader basically this basically reads data from the database and here we have made use of the jdbc cursor item reader and here just we are setting the data source we are just supplying the sql query who is that is reading data from the database and uh, we have seted a person row mapper which basically this is a uh, class which we have created in the same source file which implements row mapper and row mapper is having a callback method is called macro and basically all results is get populated, populated into the result set and we are extracting data from the result set and we are just uh, setting in this person object and same person object will be returned to the column right that's the way we work in the spring jdbc so in that way we have defined our, our reader class we have defined processor class so here processor class we have created by implementing item processor uh, interface so this is your input and this is output so input and output may be different but in this case we have kept a, a same uh, for simplicity so this is our input and same output we are returning so defining a processor in a spring batch is optional uh, right but still i have defined a processor so it's a very simple processor in, in real scenario you might have a lot of logic inside this process method right so we have also defined a writer so job of writer is to write whatever data we are reading from the database so that will write into the csv file that's all about this so this is this method already we have talked in the previous video tutorial now we have defined a step right so when you talk about the spring batch then we have to define a step a step name we have given as a step one and a step is basically wrapper of uh, basically chunk reader processor as well as writer right so chunk size we have given the hundred so here i'm going to make it as a 10 and we have register as a reader by calling reader method a reader bin we have defined over here now we have uh, we are setting a processor in a step so processor we have already defined over here and uh, finally we are calling writer which we have defined over here and finally we are calling build method on, on it so basically uh, the way we used to create the step by using the builder design pattern now after that we have defined our job right so again we make here we are making use of the job builder factory and we are calling get method and we have given the job name as export person let's say export person job and uh, incrementer here I have given because uh, when you work with the spring batch 
then every job has its unique id right so that is getting generated by the spring batch and that will insert into the database that's what we have now we have call called flow method and we are just passing this step which previously we have defined we call and and finally we call the build method that's the way we is to create the job in the spring patch application and this is the personal row mapper which already we have discussed so this this class basically uh, we have defined to perform the batch operation now uh, when we talk about the uh, scheduler right here we have defined a my scheduler and here i have annotated uh, this class as at rate component here you can use at rate component or at rate service both will work but uh, uh, this is not a service class basically so annotating as at rate component would be better and here we are enabling a, a scheduling right so by annotating as at rate enable scheduling and uh, here two things we have auto wire first is job launcher and second is job itself now here we have defined one method basically and here uh, we, this method we have annotated as at rate as schedule and we have here we have specified our cron ex expression cron expression basically here we i am telling in every 10 seconds uh, my job has to run and here uh, i have made use of the job parameter builder and i call add long method and because time is long and give i have given the name as uh, the key as a time and uh, just i am telling the milliseconds right just uh, system dot current time milliseconds and we are calling two job parameters right and the job parameters uh, i'm calling a run method i'm passing this job and this job parameters and uh, just i'm printing the status of the status of the job whether that is failed passed uh, that status will get printed over here this sop is not required at all right and here we have used uh, try with multiple catch this is the feature of java 7 so that's all about this class now now what will happen uh, if you look into the uh, my uh, and one of the model class we have defined that is called person which contains private fields with public setter getter method that's all and if you look into the application dot property application dot properties holds the information about the data source like database url username username password and driver class etc so here we are using mysql database if you look into the pom.xml then you can see the dependency what dependency we have added uh, uh, we have added dependency for the parent uh, in that case our project is child of this a spring boot starter parent now in dependency section we have added dependency for a spring batch a spring boot starter batch uh, we have also de added dependency for the uh, a spring boot starter jdbc we have added dependency for mysql because here database we are using mysql and we have added dependency for the x stream so this helps us to uh, serialize and deserialize object right so that's all that's all and here de dependency for the jdbc test cases and finally we have a plugin which helps us to generate executable jar files so that's all about this now if i run this project then what will happen uh, here database name i have given the test right so this will read the data from the database person table so currently in this person table uh, we have a 10 records and all 10 records will be read and that will be written into the csv file so right now csv file is blank but uh, here we will have to specify the csv file uh, in resources directory that's what we have given the name in the writer right uh, in the writer we have defined right and uh, uh, and uh, spring batch will write data uh, which is going to read from the read from the database that will write into the, this csv file and that will dump into this target folder so let's run this program and every second this job will be triggered right this process will be triggered every second now here is our our bootstrap class is here let's write run as a spring boot application now, now our job is success completed now in every seconds this 
see this time is getting printed is long and every second this job is getting triggered now say that completed again say that completed so every second it will read from the database so if suppose you have another application who is responsible to write some data in this uh, database then your application will read every in every take six seconds that will read data from this table that will dump into the that csv file so let's go to the csv file and see the what are the content over here so here i'm going to uh, in this directory and here uh, if you go to the classes here is the csv file i'm not going to open it because in every seconds my job is running that will try to delete this file and again create recreate it then in that case this is go this will throw an error instead i'll copy this guy i'm going to copy it and here i'm going to dump in this new folder and after that i'm going to open and show you so at this time we are expecting there should be 10 records so of course there is 10 records now what i'll do i'll delete this one and i'm going to add one record in this database uh, so let's say martin uh, bingle now martin bingle at the rate infotech here basically uh, i'm adding this record manually but in real scenario you can have a, another uh, application which might write uh, in this table right and your application is basically uh, uh, try to read data in every second from this database table right so one more record is created with id 13 now if i go to the uh, this directory in classes directory i copy this file and dump into over here and if i try to open then we will get the uh, one more record right uh, which is uh, a person which is id as 13 so that means our uh, scheduler is working perfectly fine and you see in every 10 seconds this is getting triggered every 10 seconds right you can see in every 10 second this scheduler is triggering and if some data comes uh, in this table then that will read that will read from our batch operation right so i hope uh, this scenario you can simulate with your requirement if you get some kind of requirement related to a spring batch scheduler then of course that would be worthful for you uh, so thanks for watching this video and uh, this code you'll get on the uh, github and github location i'm going to specify in the video description itself so thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial